It's like a few tombs dated back to more than 500 years ago from the Inca period and do not touch anything or remove any rocks. Oh. You could see all the skulls there too. Good morning. It is not even 7.30 yet and uh, we're getting ready to head out for the day. Yeah, we are planning on doing a two-day trip. We are going to explore the Cloca Canyon. Mm -hmm. It's one of Peru Hop's uh, suggested trips. So it's a place where it's, I think it's the second deepest canyon in the world. So we have three hours drive to the town of Chive. And we're supposed to see condors there and other wildlife, llamas and alpacas. All right, so we're about to head out the three hour drive to Chive. A three hour tour. Hold. Via Peru Hop. We're on the bus. We actually got picked up at eight o'clock. So technically it's still within the time frame from seven o'clock to eight. Perfect. But that actually means that anyone else who's getting picked up is getting picked up late. Time to get some cocoa leaves. We are in our first stop, which is basically about five minutes away from the city. Uh, this is just first pit stop to get bathroom break and coffee if you need one. And it's recommended that we actually get some cocoa leaves and cocoa candy because we're gonna go up so high, about 5,000 meters. So hopefully it's not gonna be altitude sickness. So I think we're gonna buy cocoa leaf just to mix in the tea or something like that. And then she has a few cocoa products, cocoa chocolate and also some candy. I think I'm just gonna get prepared and get a bunch of these. So I bought two products today. One is the cocoa leaf itself and it comes with a little sugar so you can make tea out of it. And the second one, although I'm not sure 100% it's gonna work, but looks yummy. So I'm gonna give it a try, cocoa chocolate. This is what we refer to in Peru as edibles. <laughs> <laughs> Look, so good. <laughs> National Reserve. This area is well known for the vicuñas. So there's so many vicuñas all around. If you don't know what vicuñas, basically looks like a alpaca or llama, but they're all over the place. The vicuña has one principal male. This male is called hainachu. Hainachu can have five or more than five females, only four like an active highway and then there's a lot of buses so you have to be very careful crossing the street and especially when you're just concentrating on the vicuñas there's a baby vicuñas for photographs you can touch them too i think we're starting to get a little higher up now so i'm going to try a few of these cocoa leaves because they're supposed to be good for higher elevation and i'm actually getting a bit winded now so it's not affecting me like headache wise or anything, but it's affecting the breath that I get in. So let's give it a go. So far, it kind of just tastes like chewing tea. So nothing too bad. Oh, there's a little bit of a stronger taste. So you just chew it up like a cow chews grass, swallow the juice, keep chewing it up, swallow the juice. And when you get no more juice, and you spit it out. This is probably one of the highest elevation I've ever been. I think this is 13,200 feet or about 4,000 meters. I feel a bit short in breath and a bit dizzy and I did see some people uh, having some kind of tea with cocoa leaves so I might have get some of them but other than that it's a beautiful day. I'm very happy to say that I'm feeling just fine. The little shortness of breath is there but I think the shortness of breath is even going to get worse when we show you some of the breathtaking views over here. You get what I just did there? Uh, Breath breathtaking. All right, let's go look. This is rolling your eyes uh, behind my sunglasses. Just got myself an Inca tea, and this is supposed to be very good because everybody's having it. It's about four soles, and then you could add sugar or not, but this one is still the pure whatever you got it. It's bitter. <laughs> How do you like it, Michael? I actually like it better than the regular tea that you often drink, but this is definitely a nicer. All right, cheers to the high altitude. Cheers. Oh, sickness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that, how it's forming. Look how it's forming. So 
so many people here, but everybody's taking a selfie with alpacas and llamas. So many llamas. Are there alpacas? I didn't see any alpacas. Oh, I think it's just llamas here. We'll find out because we're going to go pet a llama. It's a nice little llama. <laughs> Can't find one on its own. No, everybody's in the group and it seems like there's some alpacas actually. And thankfully, nobody spit on me yet. Oh, I think I found a pile of poop. It's all dried, but it's all poop. It's a little bit hard to breathe and keep your balance. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. It's a little tipsy. dizzy. This is officially the highest point I've ever been on land. Yeah, Mauna Kea was the highest before today, but I think we're at least two or 300 feet, maybe 100 meters higher than that. 16,300 feet, so we're at almost 5,000 meters. How are you feeling though? It's a little, lot harder to hold up this camera than it, than it used to be. <laughs> well, I know for the fact that my breath is so much shallower because the level of oxygen is so much lower. And, and actually when Holof was walking towards me, he, he just sort of tripped because your balance is off a little bit. We're gonna explore here for five minutes and you can see all the volcanoes around us. And after this, we're just gonna start climbing down, but this is the highest point officially. It's actually kind of cold up here too. On the way up, we saw some people you know, chipping at ice along the way. So it doesn't feel like it's below freezing, but maybe closer to the ground it is. All these little stone sculptures or stone rocks behind us, they're called cairns. I guess people have been doing this for years. So local culture here is tax stones to honor the mother earth and we just here to respect that. From this point you can see a lot of volcanoes, at least five that I counted. <sighs> have to catch your breath uh, quite often here. Just take it easy, slow and steady. Buenas tardes. <laughs> oh. As part of the Colca Canyon tour offered by Peru Hop and one of its partners, we also get a walking tour around a small village just outside Colca Canyon, uh, showing us a bit about the history. And I got to tell you, I'm a little beat out already, even though we just started, because we're at 13 or almost 14,000 feet, and the air pressure up here is not quite what we're used to. Anyway, uh, I'm going to continue on with the tour here, but I'm going to write a complete Peru Hop post about our experiences as two guys, you know, in their 40s doing Peru Hop through Peru. That post will include a lot of the information about some of the tours that we personally chose to do with Peru Hop. So let's catch up with the group. My God, I hope we're not going up there. It's a bit challenging, especially when you try to catch up with people. Oh, thank God we're going down. Uh, that means you're gonna come up back up again yeah or we're meeting the bus down at the bottom no we're not yeah we are let's crush we just started for god's sake and it's not that high up okay. we made it to the top well almost no we didn't not really now we have to go up that yeah we have to go yep this reminds me way too much of my volcano hike in guatemala i am just about last Everyone's ahead of me. I'm huffing and I'm puffing and complaining, but apparently the end is worth it. So let's keep going. Oh my goodness. Stairs everywhere. I don't think anybody's waiting for us. Somebody's climbing. So we walk up all the way on this trail up to this point and you climb up this little cliff. The tomb is all the way up here somewhere. All right, how do you go down? <laughs> Carefully. <laughs> Whoa. It's definitely not planning on going that way. 
And that's Michael. Hey Michael! So we had to climb here? No, just follow the rest of the group, I guess. I might be totally out of breath from a near complete lack of oxygen. <laughs> and I think there's another couple hundred meters to go. But look at this view. Isn't that amazing? We were told this was an easy hike. Wrong. All right, just stand right behind me here. There's like a few tombs dated back to more than 500 years ago from the Inca period. When important people died, they get buried on this cliff in Conquer Canyon. And there's just so many different paths that you can take to view some of them close by and then far away. But the most important thing is do not fall because when you fall, that means uh, what they believe is that it's gonna be a bad luck for you. So you have to give something to the Mother Earth as an offering so that the bad luck not follow you. So that's the plan today, not falling down and do not touch anything or remove any rocks. Oh, you could see all the love. skulls there too. So a lot of times when people come up here, they leave offerings at these ancient Inca tombs. And you can see here, there's money, there's flowers, there is, uh, <laughs> there's even uh, cigarettes. <laughs> Well, I don't know why they bring cigarettes, but, and did you say, uh, someone said uh, llama fetuses even, they bring up. So all these offerings are made to the ancestors here. It's very, very interesting and a little odd probably too, just for our culture, but not here. There are holes just like that all around, all the way tunnel inside this particular cliff. And it's just unbelievable. after that big dinner. Yeah. I still gotta make it down there. You can probably see everybody way back in the background. That's not because I'm behind because I'm lazy, it's be because I'm behind because I'm taking pictures. This is how far away I am. Be careful. I will. Whenever a tour guide asks you if you want to go all the way to the top, then probably it's going to be good because why would they want to go all the way up there? They're probably most likely going to take you somewhere good. room for the night. Yeah, they call it a basic room, it's a basic room. This basic room contains exactly one outlet. But they only have the two beds, uh, which is not a bad thing. It's just like bad basic room, really, really basic. The highest Irish pub in the world. Ooh, look at the pizza. Irish bar drinking uh, Kenya dark, which is just a basic Peruvian beer. All right, <laughs> just waking up, guys. But I'm going to write a Peru hop. Or spoop, or spoop. Oops.